Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. Today we will start the second chapter in our NCRT textbook Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. What do you mean by reproduction? It is the process of producing new young ones. But it can be two types, asexual or asexual. The second and third chapter both are dealing with the sexual reproduction. So when we talk about sexual reproduction, there are specialized cells called the gametes are formed which fuse to form a cell called a zygote which in turn will develop into the new individual. So this process of fusion of gametes to give rise to a zygote is called a fertilization. So we can classify or we can categorize all the events taking place in sexual reproduction under three headings. First, pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization. Fertilization is the main event but what is happening before that that is pre-fertilization. Because I told you, gametes are fusing during this process. So, gametes have to form in the body of the parents. So, that process is called a gametogenesis. Genesis means formation. Formation of gametes is called a gametogenesis. Okay. So, once the gametes are formed, two types of gametes are there, male and a female. So, in case of a plants, we call the formation of male gametes as microsporogenesis. Because the pollen grains contain the male gametes and the pollen grains are called a microspore. So, formation of microspore is microsporogenesis. The same way, uh, female gametes are formed by a process called a megasporogenesis. Now, after the formation of gametes, the gametes have to be transported. Means, especially the male gamete should reach the female gamete. So, there needs a transfer. That's called a gamete transfer, which is the second event before fertilization. So, in plants, we call this gamete transfer as pollination. So, once they come together, fusion takes place. As a result, zygote will form. And once the zygote forms, what is the next step? post fertilization events that is what is happening after the fertilization so in plants there are two events mainly happening first some amount of food material will be produced that's called the endosperm after the formation of endosperm zygote will develop into embryo that is called a embryogenesis so we are going to learn all these processes one by one in this chapter the same pattern we will repeat in the next day chapter for human reproduction so events are the same Pre-fertilization, fertilization and post-fertilization. Before we start with gametogenesis process, we should know the structure of male and female reproductive parts. So you know that flower is the reproductive part of a angiosperm and the flower has got mainly four parts arranged in whorls. The outermost whorl, whorl means circular arrangement. The outermost whorl is called a calyx. It has got individual units called a sepals. In after that comes the petals. It, together it is called a corolla. Then comes the next world called a androecium, which is the male reproductive part of a flower. The innermost world is gynecium, which is the female reproductive part. So now we are going to focus on androecium. So androecium made up of individual units called a stamens. Each stamen has again two parts, one filament and one anther on top of it. The Proximal part of this filament is attached to the thalamus. You know, thalamus is the part from which all the floral parts arise or on which the floral walls are arranged. So, proximal part means the part which is towards the center or the origin. So, that part is connected to the thalamus or in some it is attached to the petals also. That is epipetalous condition we learned last year. Whereas, the distal part, the other end is connected to the anther, the base of the anther. Now the anther is actually having four uh, regions. So a typical angiosperm anther or dicot anther is referred to as bilobed and dithicus. So here this part if you take it has got two lobes because you can see here one lobe and a second lobe. So this is actually the cross section. If you cut like this what you see like that is shown here. So it has got mainly two lobes. So it is called a bilobed. And each lobe has got two theca, so it is called a dithicus. So each anther is referred to as bilobed and a dithicus. Now, there is a central sterile region. Sterile means what? Not able to reproduce. Parenchymatous cells present here, that region is called a connective. To this connective, actually this filament is attached. 
and there is a depression or the uh, line of dehiscence means once the anther matures it has to split open so that region is called a stomium now uh, inside each lobe you can see the sporangia this uh, whole like structures circles that I have shown here are called a sporangia so how many sporangia are there four are there so in one and the four sporangia are present so we call it as tetrasporangia okay so they are there is called a microsporangia so actually within this microsporangia the pollen grains are forming there are exceptions to this structure in hibiscus means our shoe flower which belongs to family Malvaceae there the anther is monothecus there is only one theca inside the anther now we will see the wall layers of a microsporangium each microsporangium is surrounded by different layers of wall actually this wall has got four layers first layer is a protective layer which is present in every plant that is the epidermis so epidermis you can draw like this rectangular cells So this is mainly for protection. So the next layer within this is called an endothesium. So endothesium is also flat kind of cells. They have got some cellulose in them. They are getting soaked in water. That's called hygroscopic and at the same time they help in dehiscence of this anther. The inner to this layer endothesium comes the middle layers. Up to 1 to 6 layers of a middle layer can be seen but they later get degenerated. And the innermost layer is called a tapetum, which is highly nutritive in nature. So the first three layers, epidermis, endothesium and middle layers, all three together help in protection and dehiscence. Whereas the innermost layer tapetum helps in the process of providing nutrition to the developing pollen grains. Characteristics of uh, tapetal cells can be asked. Tapetal cells have rich cytoplasm and may, mostly they are multinucleate condition. Now we will see microsporogenesis. Initially, inside this microsporangium, there are undifferentiated parenchymatous cells. So, these cells are capable of giving rise to microspore or the pollen grain. So they are called a microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell PMC. We use PMC um, instead of MMC because MMC will be common for microspore, or, uh, microspore mother cell as well as megaspore mother cell. So to avoid confusion we will call here pollen mother cell. What is the ploidy of this pollen mother cell? Diploid. So it is 2N. Okay, that is two sets of chromosomes are there. Now what happens to this pollen mother cell as I told they have the ability to give rise to pollen grain. So they are meiocytes or the mother cells. So they will undergo a division called a meiosis or the reduction division where the chromosome number becomes half. So four daughter cells will form. 
each will be haploid because we know meiosis gives rise to haploid daughter cells and four in number. So here the continuation I am showing here. So initially four pollen grains formed after this called a pollen tetrad or a microspore tetrad. They stay together. Because they are connected together by plasmodesmetal connection, that is cytoplasmic connection and they are held together. Then later what happens is, there are certain chemicals called callos secreted from this tapetum which will cover each pollen grain and they cut the plasmodesmetal connection and they separate out. So now the next stage we can see the pollen grains separate. Okay, so these are actually these processes are happening simultaneously in all the four microsporangia, but I am just showing in a continuous way that is, first a pollen mother cell diploid, it undergoes meiosis to form four daughter cells, they are held together, then it is called a pollen tetrad, each one is haploid, later they separate out to form individual pollen grains. So this process of formation of the microspore from the uh, pollen mother cell or the sporogenous tissue is called a microsporogenesis. So this tissue completely called a sporogenous tissue. Each cell will become a pollen mother cell and gives rise to pollen grain. So pollen grain is called a, the male gametophyte. Gametophyte means gamete producing structure. So pollen grains are not a gamete remember. Pollen grains have gametes forming within that it is called a pollen uh, is the male gametophyte of a flowering plant. Now we have to see the structure of a pollen grain. If you see the structure of a pollen grain, it has got two layered walls. The wall of pollen grain is called a sporoderm. It has got two layers. The outer wall is called a exine, which I have used a red color here. And inner to that, there is a layer called a intine. Exine or the outer wall has got ornamentations in certain pollen grains. And it is very thick wall. And it is made up of a special substance called a sporopollenin. Sporopollenin is very hard substance. It can withstand very high temperature. Also, it cannot be acted upon by any acid, alkali or enzyme. So, as a result, pollens are preserved as fossils. Now, coming to the second layer of the inner layer, indine. Indine is made up of cellulose and a pectin. In some areas of the exine, the sporopollenin is thin or absent, that aperture or it makes an opening called a germ pore. So whenever the pollen is germinating, the pollen tube comes out through the germ pore. So initially there is plasma membrane and nucleus, eventually one large vacuole also will develop and the nucleus will undergo uh, mitosis to form two cells. The bigger cell is called a vegetative cell or the tube cell, it will grow as the pollen tube, whereas the small cell is called a generative cell which will later get separated from the plasma membrane and it will float inside the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. So it's a spindle shaped small structure. The nucleus of the generative cell is becoming the male gamete. So in 60% of the angiosperm, the pollen grain is released from the anther at this two celled stage. Whereas another 40% of angiosperms, the Generative cell nucleus divides again to form two male gametes. It, at this three celled stage only, it will be released out. Now, in certain plants like a anona or a typha, etc., the pollen tetrad remain connected to each other. They don't get separated. Such uh, pollen grains are called a compound pollen grains. Whereas in plants like Calotropis and the orchids, all the pollen grains in a pollen sac will remain connected together as a single bundle, and that is called a pollinium. Branch which deals with the study of pollen grain is called a palynology. Usually in dicots there are three germ pores present whereas in monocots there is only one germ pore present. Hope you understood the concept of the male reproductive part and the pollen development. Uh, next video we will deal with the female reproductive system and the megasporogenesis. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.